What is going on, everybody? It is your boy, Dylan the Villain, coming back at you once again with some total extreme wrestling 2020. It is Monday, week 4, February 1997. We are less than a week away from the In Your House pay-per-view. We are on the road to WrestleMania. This next pay-per-view is going to be a big one, guys. As y'all know, Shawn Michaels had to vacate the World Wrestling Federation heavyweight title. So we are doing a Final Four to where the winner will face Royal Rumble winner Dwayne Gill. As y'all know, for those of y'all watch Shotgun Saturday Night, y'all know that we are not going to have the Rocky Maivia versus Farouk match at the pay-per-view. Instead, we are going to have that match tonight on Monday Night Raw as the main event. Rocky Maivia versus Farouk in a steel cage. Winner goes on to the final, the fatal four-way match at the pay-per-view. We are also going to discuss the situation between Psycho Sid and Triple H. Vince McMahon is going to announce that. We have a big Vader match coming tonight with a big return from suspension. The uh, opponent that he's facing. And we have a promo from Stone Cold Steve Austin. So let's just get right into the action. This opening segment got an 81. I went to Road Agent Notes. Don't worry about that. It will all be revealed soon enough. So we're going to go to the next segment. Ah, spoilers. Damn you. All right. So, we have the opening. <laughs> well, that was a spoiler. Uh, for those of y'all play the game, y'all know it's probably fixing, something's fixing to happen. Um, we have an opening promo, and this Fitzman man in the ring. And he says, from the match of Shotgun Saturday Night between Triple H and Sid Vicious, that he believes that both men should advance to the Fatal 4-Way match at the pay-per-view. Triple H showed initiative, he showed desire, he showed attitude. Yeah, he showed an attitude, an attitude of wanting to be at the top of the best company in the world. He also was highly impressed that Triple H was able to hold his own against Psycho Sid and not back down from a challenge. So Triple H will be put in the match along with Psycho Sid. Because technically, Sid did beat Undertaker last Monday by disqualification. So, there's that going on. This is a whole bunch of... It's a whole... It's a big mess, but... Vince McMahon said, Triple H said, are going to be in the match, along with Do Love, who won his qualifying match last Monday Night Raw. This segment got an 81. We're going to go on to the next segment. And it is the opening contest of tonight. And, uh... Bout that had Super Wrestling, Little Heat, Rey Mysterio, and Juventud Guerrero defeated Kid and Lance Storm. When Juventud Guerrero pinned Lance Storm with a Juice Driver, uh, Juice with a 55, Ray Ray with a 67, Lance Storm 47, and Kid with a 74. Wow, we uh, segment got a 69. Nice. Um, for those who've y'all been watching, y'all know that we are having a light heavyweight tournament. With the two winners going on to WrestleMania to fight for the new World Wrestling Federation Light Heavyweight title. Juice made his big debut on Shotgun Saturday Night coming out to help Rey Mysterio. These two have been rivals throughout the years. And Juice basically returning the favor and saving Rey Mysterio from the attack from Kid and Lance Storm. So they had a tag team match tonight. And they pulled off the win. The Luchadors pulled off the win against Kid and Lance Storm. We go on to the next segment. And we get an 81 in this segment. And this segment is pretty much Vince McMahon asked Do Love and Owen Hart to come into the office because he had some news for him. So they walk into the office. Do Love doing his typical dancing. Owen Hart is just trying to ignore him the best he can. And Owen's like, you, you wanted to see us, Vince. And Vince goes, yes. Last Monday, I put y'all two tag team champions against each other. The tag team of Owen Hart and Do Love. And Do Love interrupts him and goes, it's the Love Rockets. And Vince has a confused face and he's like, excuse me? He's like, the Love Rockets. That's, a, that's our tag team name, baby. The Love Rockets. I'm Do Love. He's Owen, the Rocket, Rocket, Love, Love Rockets, baby. And Owen just puts his hand in his face, and he's just like, "You, why, God? Why me? Why, why, why? 
Am I teamed up with Dulove? Why? Why? And he just shakes his head and goes, what? And Vince goes, oh, okay, whatever. Anyway, I called y'all two in here because since, dude, you beat Owen Hart last week, the tag team titles will not be defended at the pay-per-view. So tonight's co-main event, y'all put y'all's tag team titles on the line. And Owen goes, wait, with this short notice? And Vince goes, well, that's what it's like to be a champion, Owen. You should know that. That you have to be willing to defend your title at a moment's notice. And Owen's like, oh, uh, whatever. Who, who's, who's, who's our opponent? And Vince goes, why, it's the undefeated Legion of Doom. And Owen's just like, oh, man, you got to be kidding me. And Owen's like, don't stress out, Owen, baby. With my help, I'm, I'm, I'm the heavyweight. I'm the one pulling in all the wins, baby. With me on your team, you got nothing to worry about. No one's, Owen's kind of getting frustrated, you know, because everybody's basically saying, like, do love's better than Owen because do love beat Owen. Everybody's kind of hinting towards, you know, that do love is the stronger of the two, and Owen's kind of starting to get frustrated. And Owen's like, whatever, I'm going to go get ready for my match. Dude, you, you do what you do. I'm going to go get ready for my match. So that's the end of that segment. We go to the next segment. And it is the Vader match. And Vader beats a returning Goldust. Uh, I had a lot of people who know me personally message me and ask me, who watch it, who ask me what happened to Goldust. Uh, Goldust failed uh, a drug test for softcore drugs. He was smoking the weeds. Um, so he got a 30-day suspension. And uh, he makes his return tonight. He was suspended for a couple weeks. And he made his return tonight. Uh, he's going to job on his return, and he loses to Vader, basically to get Vader some momentum going towards the pay-per-view. Match got a 71. I was hoping that the match would do better. Uh, Vader with an 80, Goldust with a 77. Yeah, I don't know why this match didn't do as good as it did, but um, 71. So we go on to the next segment. And after the match, Jim Cornette is in the ring, along with Vader. And Jim Cornette has his microphone in his hand, and he looks right at the hard camera. And he goes, ha, Dwayne Gill, week after week after week after week, I come out here and I talk about how Vader is going to beat you, how Vader is going to destroy you, that you might as well sign your will and make all your funeral arrangements because you're not going to the hospital after the match. You're going to a funeral home. Ha. Week after week, I've been talking and promoting about how strong Vader is, how dominant Vader is, how in every company that Vader has been in, he's been a world champion. He's beaten some of the best competitive professional wrestlers around the world. Well, I'm sure that you and these fans that in the arena and the fans watching at home are sick of me hyping and sick of me pumping up this match and talking about how great Vader is because everybody just seen why Vader is great. I don't need to hype this man anymore. I don't need to insult you anymore because I went home and I thought about it, Dwayne Gill, that if I compare you to anything and insult you, well, that's an insult to something that I'm comparing you to because you're that much of a worthless scum piece of crash on the bottom of my boot. You might have wrecked into my Cadillac car and destroyed it. Become this pay-per-view at the become this Sunday at the pay-per-view. Vader's gonna destroy you. Your time's up, son. And Vader's gonna take your spot at WrestleMania and win the World Wrestling Federation heavyweight title. Just like he's done in every other promotion he's been in. And you can go all in on that, Jack, because that's a guarantee. Wow, big words from Jim Cornette. Uh, segment got a 72. Um, wow, I can't wait for the pay-per-view match between Vader and Dwayne Gill and a last man standing. This is, wow. Uh, yeah, Vader, Vader's going Vader's gonna to kill him. I mean, there's no if and buts are about it, Vader. 
it has to be a miracle from God for Dwayne Gill to win. So, yeah, next segment. Oh, and it's Jeff Jarrett. And Jeff Jarrett, as y'all been keeping up, Jeff Jarrett made his big debut on the big show. And it was, it, I mean, it was probably one of the biggest signings in WWF history. But Vince didn't sign him. It was Linda who signed him. And Vince is not really impressed with Jeff Jarrett. Jeff Jarrett, after Linda McMahon has passed away, Jeff Jarrett interrupted Vince's in his office morning with his with his children. And Vince put him in a match, and then Jeff said he wanted to be in the qualifying match. Vince put him in a match, and he lost that match. So Vince McMahon calls Jeff Jarrett in and to the office, and Jeff goes, Vince, la- last week I wasn't prepared to face the Ultimate Warrior. Vince goes, shut up. I didn't call you in here for your, your stupid-ass excuses anymore, Jeff. Right now, I want, I've, I've, I think I found somebody. I think I found the right person. And Jeff Jarrett goes, what are you talking about, Vince? He goes, well, that detective, Shane Helms, mentioned that I should hire him as a bodyguard. Well, I don't think he's quite good enough to be my bodyguard. So I went looking around, and I found somebody who I thought would be the perfect bodyguard for me. Somebody who will protect me from the Undertaker. It's the tags. And Vince, Jeff Jarrett goes, uh, okay, well, what does this have to do with me? Vince goes, well, you're a great wrestler. And Jeff Jarrett's like, well, well, thank you, Vince. He goes, don't, don't, no. You're a great wrestler. And I believe you can give this guy a good match. So, I'm I'm booking you against my bodyguard here tonight. And Jeff Jarrett goes, uh, uh, okay, well, who, who's your bodyguard? And he goes, well, I really don't know what to call him yet. But I'll let you go out there and, and find out who it is on your own. So Jeff Jarrett goes to the ring. You know, he we go to commercial and we come back. And Jeff Jarrett, he's already standing in the ring and everything like that. And Jeff Jarrett looks ready. And all of a sudden... Vince McMahon's music hits, and it's like, no chance, that's what you got. And Jeff Jarrett's just like, what, I'm, I'm wrestling Vince McMahon. And then all of a sudden, this big, giant, massive man walks out on stage. And I mean, he's probably about seven foot two. He's probably about 485 pounds. And then all of a sudden, Jeff Jarrett's eyes get real big because he realizes who it is. And it is Paul freaking White. Paul White comes out there and just toys with with Jeff Jarrett and just kills him with a choke slam. Uh, Paul White with a 77. Jeff Jarrett with a 65. Uh, They have good chemistry, and it lifted the match, which the match got a 56, Um, which which is terrible. Uh, Ah, Vince is still a face. Uh, I got to change that. So that's probably why the match didn't do good. Uh, they have good chemistry together. Vince managing him and Paul White benefited for making his big debut. Uh, so here he is. Paul White is here. And uh, yeah, he uh, he destroys Jeff Jarrett. So Vince McMahon hired this guy who Jeff Jarrett seems like he knows uh, named Paul White as his bodyguard. I mean, this man is massive. He's big. Then after the match, Vince McMahon takes the microphone and he's smiling and he's doing his typical Vince McMahon walks and he goes, see, that's why I hired this man. Y'all might be wondering who this man is. Well, this man used to work for somebody else. But like every other talent who comes over here, they were getting pushed down the roster for washed up superstars who, who, with multiple back problems who try to think they're cool or guys who are looking to be 16-time world champions who are looking to get laid when they're 64 years old and have to take medicine to get a boner. (laughs) So I hired Paul White. And I got a challenge. This man right here, 
is going to put an end to your little whatever the hell you're doing, Undertaker. Whatever the hell you're up to, whatever somebody's telling you what to do, trying to destroy me and my company. Well, I hired somebody who's going to destroy you. So at this in your house pay-per-view, Undertaker, I want a match between my bodyguard and you. <laughs> and you can tell your dark lord, whoever the hell he is, that that he might want to find a, a new second in command because after this pay-per-view, you're going to be no more in the World Wrestling Federation. <laughs> so that segment got a 79. Vince McMahon put out a challenge that his new bodyguard is going to face The Undertaker at the pay-per-view. And Vince McMahon guarantees that his new bodyguard, Paul White, will destroy The Undertaker at the In Your House pay-per-view. We're going to go on to the next segment. I believe it is the tag team match, if I'm not mistaken, is what we got next. But before that, we have an interview with Michael Cole and Owen Hart and Love, And Michael Cole... He stops them. They're, they're on their way to the ring. And Michael Cole goes, So, love rockets! And Owen goes, Please, don't 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 call us that. And do love's like, That's our tag team name, baby. You don't like it? And Owen's like, No. No, I, I don't like the name Love Rockets. And do love's like, Why not? I'm do love. You're the rocket, Owen Hart. My name, your name, love. Your nickname, Love Rockets. And Owen's just like, he puts his hand in his face and he just doesn't understand. You know, he's just like, whatever. And Michael Cole's like, so guys, you are facing the Legion of Doom, the Road Warriors, Animal and Hawk, in tonight's co-main event for the tag team titles. Y'all have been an unlikely tag team, to say the least. And I'm just curious... What is your strategy on winning? And Owen goes, well, you see, I'm going to... And then Do Love just cuts him off. And he's just like, we're going to do what we always do, baby. Owen's going to lay the moves. And I'm going to lay my the moves on me. I'm going to lay the moves down also. And we're going to pick up the win. Just like we always do. Ain't that right, hearty baby? And Owen's just like... He just looks at him and he's just like, please... Please quit talking. Please just quit talking. And Do Love's smiling and he gives him a thumbs up. And Owen's just like, yeah. And Michael Cole says, so are y'all ready for the night's match with short notice? And Owen's just like, ready as I'll ever be. And Do Love's like, I'm ready, baby. And he goes to give a high five. And Owen just looks at his high five and he slaps it and he puts his head down. And he, he just shakes his head and he walks off, you know, and they go to the ring. So that match is next. So I'm not going to go to the match because it's going to say who the winner is. But screw it. We're going to go to it. 81. Awesome stuff. The match ever from because there was enough selling going on. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh-huh. I wonder who that was. But the Legion of Doom defeat the Love Rockets in 1250. Eight. When Road Warrior Hawk pinned Owen Hart with a flying lariat, they do the Doomsday device and hit him. Uh... It was pretty much a competitive back and forth tag team match the whole time. But uh Animal runs and hits do love off the apron. They get the advantage on Owen Hart. They pin Owen Hart. And the Legion of Doom are the new WWF World Tag Team Champions. And we go on uh both teams have great chemistry when uh no, they have great and Road Warriors have excellent chemistry. Uh, and plus, the Road Warriors also have the tag team specialist. Um, Owen and Do Love both with a 95. Uh, Road Warriors both with a 74. So, yeah. Uh, next segment. After this, Owen is in the middle of the ring, and Do Love rolls back in, and he helps Owen up. And Owen just pushes Do Love off of him. And Do Love's kind of standing in the ring. You know, you really can't. They don't have mics, so you can't really tell. And Do Love's like, you know, he's kind of standing there, and he's just like, well, you know, like, hey, man, like, it's okay, it's okay, you know. And Do Love's just like, don't touch me, don't touch me, just leave me alone. And Do's like, 
it'll be all right, man. It'll be all right. You know, it's just like, well, he's, he's getting pissed. And uh, do love, you know, is standing in the middle of the ring with his hands on his hip and he's shaking his head. And Owen puts his head down and he seems to be really upset that they just lost this match. So I don't know, guys. I don't know. This might be the beginning of the end of the Love Rockets or they might just hit a bump in the road or something. But I don't know. I have no clue what's going on with that. So 70 got a 78. We're going to move on to the next segment. And it is the Stone Cold Steve Austin promo. And Stone Cold is standing backstage. And he goes, I got to channel my best Steve Austin here. And Steve Austin goes, You see, once again, I'm being held down by Vince McMahon because of some stupid stimulation, stipulation in my con in the Bret Hart contract that I can't be a part of the fatal four way matchup at the pay per view. Well, I think that's just a bunch of bullshit that I can't win the WWF title that's rightfully mine. You see, I won the King of the Ring and I couldn't even compete in the Royal Rumble because Bret Hart wants to attack me. I've done everything. I've beaten everybody that this roster has from the main eventers to the guy opening the curtain to the guy that y'all don't even know his name. I've beaten everybody. Anybody who steps in the ring with me, I beat them and I beat the brakes off of them. Every single one. Rocky Maivia, Do Love, Sid, Triple H. The only man I haven't beat and to have the opportunity to beat is Brett the Hitman Hart. So I'm going to tell y'all, I don't care if it's Farouk or Rocky Maivia who wins this next match. I don't care if it's Do Love, Sid, or Triple H who wins the Fatal 4-Way pay-per-view main event. I don't give a damn. Because after, I don't care if it's Dwayne Gill who ends up winning the title. I don't care if it's Vader. I don't care who it is. Because after WrestleMania, like Vince McMahon said, I'm going to be first in line once I beat Bret Hart's scrawny little ass in the middle of that ring. I'm going to be first in line. And you better god dang believe that I'm going to become the new World Wrestling Federation heavyweight champion. So good luck to you five men. Because after Mania, I'm coming for y'all. An awesome promo from Steve Austin. We go to the next segment, and I believe it is the main event matchup between Rocky, Maivia, and Farouk. And it is. We're going to go ahead and do that. Yep. All right. All right. Good shit. It got great. Uh, the turn didn't go that great, but it did good. And about with good wrestling and decent reaction crowd, Rocky Maivia defeated Farouk in a cage match when Rocky Maivia escaped from the front door. But during the match, Ahmed Johnson and Karma ran in and prevented Farouk from leaving the cave. Leaving the cage. During the match, during the match, Rocky Maivia and Farouk were going back at it, going back and forth, going back and forth, going back and forth. And then the nation comes down to the ring. Farouk goes to leave the cage, and Ahmed slams the door on him. They get in the ring. They start beating the hell out of Ahmed. They pick up Rocky Maivia, and they let Rocky Maivia win the match. And Rocky Maivia goes to the final four, is the final four person going to the Fatal 4-Way match at the No Way Out pay-per-view. We go to the next segment, and Rocky Maivia is standing with Karma and Ahmed Johnson as Farouk lays in the middle of the ring. Rocky takes the promo. Rocky grabs the microphone and he says, Before anybody can ask why, before anybody can question me, I'm just going to go ahead and give you the answer. You see, These two men behind me 
were being held down by an old has-been who had his moment in the sun a couple years ago in another promotion. Well, these two men have been in this promotion since day one looking for an opportunity to shine. And guess what? They came to me and they said, Rocky, you have a bright future. You're young. You're hot. You're on top. And let me tell you something. They couldn't have picked a better leader. Because now when I go to the fatal four-way matchup, I'm going to have these two men in my corner. And I'm going to win the match. And I'm going to go on. And I'm going to beat Vader's fat ass if he wins. And a scrawny little jabroni, Dwayne Gill. I'm going to whoop his ass at WrestleMania. I'm going to win the World Wrestling Federation heavyweight title. And I'm going to become the youngest WWF champion in history. Now, I can sit here and talk about the legends of the past and how they're great, but, well, they all suck, and they can all kiss my ass. Because when I go, I'm going to beat anybody's candy ass who steps in the ring with me, and I'm going to have these two men behind me. And they're going to make sure that I win the World Wrestling Federation heavyweight title. Wow. So the rock turned hill, everybody. Rocky Maivia turned hill. He pretty much, they kicked out Farouk as the leader. And Rocky Maivia is now the leader of the nation. We'll see where this goes. We'll see where this goes. That's all I can really say is we'll see what the hell's going to happen. Uh, we have Shotgun Saturday night before the pay-per-view Saturday. So that's going to end the show, guys. We got an 84 and increased our popularity in 36 regions. We would have gained popularity in one Canadian region, but our growth restricted that because of the limited viewers. Um, we got a new deal in the British region, like I've been saying, and Canada also, which it, it, uh, I don't know why we didn't gain pop in that, but uh, we got on Sky One Network in England. We qualified for that, so I went ahead and... Signed a new contract instead of Sky One Sports. We're now on Sky One, which also does uh, the pay-per-views for England. So I think we went from medium to big, if I'm not mistaken, in England. And Canada, we got uh, – I would have to go check and see. But uh, Canada, we also got a new deal. Uh, and it pretty much does Canada and uh, some other regions – also, so that was a good show. I think that's one of our best shows. Uh, as we keep going, we just keep getting better and better and better and better and better. Um, the Paul White Jeff Jarrett match could have did a lot better, uh, but I can't complain at it. Anyway, uh, Vader defeats Goldust. Jim Cornette says that, like he's been saying week after week after week, that Dwayne Gill, uh, his days are numbered, and he's gonna, he's Vader's gonna kill him. Uh, Vince McMahon hired a new bodyguard named Paul White. Um, Vince McMahon also challenged The Undertaker to a match between Paul White and The Undertaker at the pay-per-view. The Love Rockets dropped the World Wrestling Federation World Tag Team titles to Legion of Doom. After the match, Owen Hart didn't had nothing to do with Do Love. He seemed upset. Uh, as y'all know, y'all just watched the episode, Owen Hart was the one who took the pinfall. So, Owen Hart may be beating himself up. Stone Cold Steve Austin says he doesn't give a damn who wins at the Fatal 4 pay-per-view. In the house, uh, the four-way match at the pay-per-view, he doesn't give a damn who wins it. He doesn't give a damn who wins at WrestleMania. He just know that he's going to beat Bret Hart at WrestleMania. He's going to go and beat anybody's candy ass who is the champion. And Rocky Maivia teamed up with Karma and... Farouk, uh, I mean, Ahmed Johnson, and they pretty much made Rocky the new leader of the nation and kicked Farouk to the curve. So that's the show, guys. Um, thank you all for watching. Like and subscribe. Catching up with the videos. You know, um, sorry that the videos have not been coming out as frequently. Uh, by the time y'all watch this, I might have a brand new baby boy. So... Um, that's why recording kind of 
slow down a little bit. Um, so, yeah, I have a new son by the time that y'all watch this, I believe. Um, it will be uploaded by then. Hopefully, it will be uploaded by then. Um, thank y'all for all the love and support. Um, I'm going to try to record as much as I can. I don't want to promise anything. Uh, I'm going to try to record as much TW as I can. When I can. Uh, but I know that Sky has been working on a whole bunch of projects also. So check that out. He has a whole bunch of solo videos that he's going to be doing in the near future. And I think that's it, guys. I think that's all the announcements that I have to make. Until the next video, guys. This has been Dylan the Villain. I love y'all. Thank y'all. Love. Peace. Chicken grease. See y'all in the next one. Out.